Today's Reading Street book is called Leonardo's Horse. Uh, if you've heard of Leonardo da Vinci, it's about the artist Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci and some of his accomplishments and some of his failures. And so this is a biography. Now a biography is a genre, of course. A biography is a story of a person's life written by another person. As you read, notice all the ups and downs in Leonardo da Vinci's life. So if you wrote your own story, that's called an autobiography, but this was one written about Leonardo by someone else, by Jean Fritz. Here's another picture. You can see this gigantic horse and Leonardo, and then a smaller horse in Leonardo's arms. Anyone who watched the young Leonardo wander the countryside around his home in Vinci might have guessed that he would be an artist. He stopped to examine everything. He looked at the landscape as if he were memorizing it. So it was no surprise when his father took him as a young teenager to Florence to study art. So his name is Leonardo, and he's from the place called Vinci. So Leonardo da Vinci. This looks like the area where he's from. So it would be like saying your name, de Sterling, right? Leonardo da Vinci, from Vinci. Isn't that interesting? That's how his name came about. People noticed that Leonardo was different. He dressed differently. While other young men wore long togas, Leonardo wore short, rose-colored velvet togas. And it'd be kind of like, almost like a dress, actually. There's a toga, and his is shorter, as you can see, and then and then look at all the stuff. We're going to talk about that stuff, too. I'll actually show you that picture while I read, okay? This is some of the interesting stuff about Leonardo. He wrote differently. He wrote backwards. He wrote from the right side of the paper to the left. A person would have to use a mirror to read his writing. Isn't that amazing? He wrote backwards. And he would not eat meat. He liked animals too much to eat anything that had once been alive nor could he stand the sight of caged birds. If he saw a man selling birds, he would buy them all, and then he would open the cages and watch the birds fly away. What a flurry they made. How did they do it? All his life, Leonardo tried to discover his secret of flying, their secret of flying, sorry, of birds, so he could make a flying machine for himself. He studied things all the time. So if he saw a bird flying, he kept studying to see how they move. He's really a curious and... Um, a man who just wanted to keep exploring and learning. For a man who liked to ask questions, Leonardo da Vinci was born at the right time, April 15, 1452. Everybody was asking questions then. The age was called the Renaissance. You'll study that later also. The Renaissance was this time, a time of rebirth, when people who had forgotten how to be curious became curious again. They were exploring new countries, discovering, inventing, looking at old things in new ways. What was the point, Leonardo asked, in copying what had already been done? He had to bring his own experience into whatever he painted. You wouldn't catch him putting a halo around the, he the head of a saint. How could he? He'd never seen a halo. So he wanted to draw things that he had seen. He didn't want to draw things that he hadn't seen. Leonardo da Vinci turned out to be a famous artist. Still, he was not just an artist. He could never be just one thing. He was an engineer, an architect, a musician, a philosopher, an astronomer. Once he fashioned a special kind of flute made of silver in the shape of a horse's head. The ruler of Florence, Lorenzo de Medici, asked him to deliver it as a gift to the Duke of Milan. It was, he, this was lucky for Leonardo. He had heard that the Duke of Milan wanted to honor his father with a bronze horse in front of his palace and Leonardo wanted to be the one to make it. So besides painting, right, he was so many other things. An architect designs buildings, right? And he was a musician and a philosopher, an astronomer that studies the stars, and an engineer. And he now wants to make this huge horse to go in front of this home, the castle, I'm sure. This would be his mark on history. Hundreds of years later, people would point to the horse. Leonardo made that, they would say. So he wrote to the Duke listen, listing all the things he could do. He could make cannon, lightweight bridges, and covered chariots that couldn't be broken or harmed. 
On and on he went, but he saved the most important for the la point for the last. He could make a bronze horse. In the end, he didn't send the letter. He simply left for Milan. Never mind that he was in the midst of painting a large religious picture in Florence. Let someone else finish it. He had planned the picture, and that was the important part. So again, he was very, very creative and always busy and always doing stuff, but he really wants to build this huge horse. It's one of his biggest dreams. And here he is. He's drawn some pictures of it. He's got creativity all over the place. He's trying to get them to commission or have him be the one that does the building. Leonardo was 30 years old now, handsome with curly blonde hair. The Duke gave him the job of working on the horse, but at the same time he, expected to take, he was expected to take charge of entertainment in the palace. Well, he had a beautiful singing voice, and he could play mus musical instruments, and he could juggle and ask riddles, and he was also asked to stage elaborate plays for special occasions. Whenever he had a chance, he went back to the horse. So he has to do all these things besides make the horse, right? He has to entertain them. He had visited the stables, studying how a horse was put together. Okay, he just keeps watching them over and over to see how they're put together. He needed to understand everything about his subject. He measured and drew pictures until he knew where all the bones and muscles of a horse were. But you couldn't show all the muscles on a statue, he said, or the horse would look like a bag of turnips. You should show only those muscles the horse was used or getting ready to use, was using or getting ready to use. He visited statues of horses. Many were shown in an amble, left front leg moving at the same time as the back left leg. This was not easy for a horse. He had to be taught to do it. Leonardo saw one horse, however, that he described as free, left front leg and right back leg moving together in a trot. Moreover, both ears were pointed forward. Some horses pointed one ear back to hear the rider's orders. Leonardo was ready to begin, but the Duke wasn't quite ready. He wanted a much bigger horse than the one he had originally planned, one three times larger than life. Could Leonardo manage anything that large? The Duke wondered. He wrote to Lorenzo asking him to recommend someone who could do the job. Lorenzo replied, Leonardo da Vinci was the only one. On April 23rd, 1490, okay, so these are the 2000s, so 1490. A long time ago, right? Uh, almost 500 years ago, actually, 450. Leonardo wrote in his notebook, I resume work on the horse. The hardest part would be the casting. He collected 58,000 pounds of tin, metal, tin, and copper, which would be heated until it was fluid. This would turn into bronze and be used to cast the horse. So it would be very heavy, right? Um... Sorry, real quick, I'm making sure that I have the, yeah, 530 years ago. I'm sorry, 530 years ago, that was <laughs> crazy. Um, so he collected 58,000 pounds of metal, and he would heat it till it became a liquid. And this would turn into bronze. But should he pour the bronze all at once? No one had tried a single pouring of anything this large. Again, they did not have the machinery that we have nowadays. How was he going to handle something a three times the size of a horse made of metal? Heavy be really a tough thing to do. So then there's this picture. The crowds looking at, ooh. In November 1493, he had completed the clay model, 24 feet high. It was shown off at one of the Duke's special occasions and it was a sensation. So this is what it's going to look like. Look how huge that, just the legs are. But this one's made of clay. Now he needs to eventually make it out of metal, bronze. But Leonardo seemed to be in no hurry to start casting. Perhaps he wasn't sure how he'd do it. Besides, he was planning a new project. Later, in 1498, there were rumors that the French were preparing to invade Milan, and the Duke wanted to be ready. And there was all the metal that Leonardo had collected and just what the Duke needed. So he set it off to be made into cannon. So that'd be like weapons. Well, this is war, Leonardo reasoned. What else could they do? So they're taking all his metal that he collected and they're going to send it off to make weapons so he won't have it for his horse right now. When the French came in 1499, Leonardo and the Duke fled, but that horse made of clay, it couldn't flee. And so there he was when the French arrived. Then the archers, the people with bow and arrows, laughed. Never would they find as perfect a target, they said. 
So pulling back the strings on their bows, they let their arrows fly, ping, ping, ping. The horse sagged, ping. Then it rained, and the horse became smaller and smaller. And at last, it was nothing but a pile of mud stuck with arrows. Not quite the dream that Leonardo had had, is it? Well, Leonardo went back to inventing and painting, but he never forgot his horse that he didn't get to finish. He still wanted to invent a flying machine, but he still couldn't do it. His greatest disappointment in life, though, was his horse. As Leonardo became older, his hair turned white and grew down to his shoulders, and his beard reached to his waist, and he became depressed. What had he achieved, he asked himself. He complained to his notebook. Tell me, he asked, if anything has been achieved by me. Tell me, tell me. It was especially hard when his rival, Michelangelo, taunted him. So Michelangelo was, again, another famous artist, and he taunted or teased Leonardo. You, Michelangelo said, who made a model of a horse that you could never cast in bronze and which you gave up into your shame. In his notebook, Leonardo mourned, I have wasted my hours. In, on May 2nd, 1519, Leonardo da Vinci died. It was said that even on his deathbed, deathbed, Leonardo wept for his horse. Now, wait a second. He's extremely famous for that painting, just that, that painting alone, right? The Mona Lisa? But because he didn't accomplish this horse, he felt like he was a failure, and he became very depressed. Isn't that sad? Instead of thinking of all the things that he had done, he dwelled on the things he hadn't been able to accomplish. Well, in 1977, so many, many, many years, hundreds of years later, Charles Dent, an American and a big fan of Leonardo, saw a magazine article about him. When he read that Leonardo died grieving for his horse, Charles said, let's give Leonardo his horse. But Charles Dent died before work was finished. Later, a sculptor from New York City named Nina Akamu carried on with Charles's dream. Many people contributed money to help her finish. And finally, on September 10th, 1999, in Milan, Italy, in front of huge crowds, the horse was unveiled. So it finally came true in 1999. Okay, that was the man that first was going to work on it, but then he died. And so Nina Akamu is the one that got to actually do it in the end. And it says, at last, Leonardo's horse was home. So again, a huge horse made of bronze, finally many, many, many years later, uh, probably around 500 years later. Isn't that incredible? So it's a neat story about, yes, Leonardo did not get to accomplish his dream, but these people who had studied him and who admired him ended up finishing the dream for him.